So you've started playing League. You're trying to climb and you're wondering what the hell do I need to do to get anywhere because this game's destroying my social life. I at least want a shiny badge or something to show for it. Don't worry, I got you. This is a bronze to challenger for Alistair. What do you need to know? You're likely learning the basics of the game. I expect to see a lot of missed combos, engaging at bad times, and generally just very crazy decisions. The first thing I recommend to any iron player is go into practice tool and learn basic alley combos. Just focus on WQ and make sure it's muscle memory. Just focus on that for now. Also, before you try and combo, just ping before you go in as well. Using the on your way ping is generally the best way to do that. There's a lot of work from here, but don't get overwhelmed. Like I said, just stick to one thing at a time. You will most likely climb if you focus on that. When coaching bronze students, I often see them being able to hit their combos like uh, 50 60 percent of the time so they still need to work on their combos but what do bronze players do better than iron well here i start seeing the first instances of things like trading on minions or using pings at a simple level if you're trying to climb out of the bronze ball pit i would say keep using practice tool for your basic combos but try to add a few extra things to it things like q flashing and some basic hex flash locations Silver for me is where the first instances of laning start. People usually have trouble in skirmishes or team fights, as I feel a lot of silver players get overwhelmed when there's a lot of things going on and they need to keep track of it. But in lane, they make noticeably less mistakes than bronze elo. This is the elo I would start learning when you should be roaming. Understand some really basic wave management, like don't always fast push this wave. Instead, try to zone the enemies away from it as you build it up and crash that into the tower. Tips like this are usually enough to get you out of silver, as there's still a bunch of windows that you're probably not capitalizing on so good luck what I expect from a gold player is simple, being able to not completely shit the bed in lane if behind, and even finding a few plays when under pressure in lane. Your understanding of your champion becomes really important. Players in this elo are usually a lot more tryhard and committed to ranked. This is the elo you would start changing from what I would call a loser's mindset into a winner's mindset. What I mean by that is you aren't spending all of your time punishing the enemy's mistakes, but taking your first steps to pressure the opponents hard enough that they crack under the pressure. Things like zoning them in lane, creating zones of control, threatening ganks by using pink wards, and using your fog of war at a basic level to threaten your roams. Start being a menace. Okay, now we're talking. You're nearly there. The promised land. The best elo in the universe. You're just one step away. Plat elo to me can be summed up like this. You know that feeling you get just before the roller coaster drops from the highest point? That feeling of tension? That's what plat elo is to me. Plat players on the whole can and do often show signs that they are more than five brain cells stuffed into a straitjacket and often can even show a decent understanding of their champions. But what I see they almost always lack is self-control. During those tense moments when you really have to avoid randomly combo Going for no reason, for example, on Ali, or starting a fight without actually thinking a few steps ahead. I see more games thrown in plat than in any other elo, because this is the elo people start developing savage levels of ego. So rein the ego in and back off after you take a few towers, or an inhib. You don't need to win the game in one single push, and remember to stop fighting over nothing. Alistair shines if you set up fights beforehand and then pounce when the enemies are out of position, starting with a huge combo on a priority target. Good luck, this is where the grind starts for most people. Congratulations, you just made it to the promised land, the creme de la creme of League of Legends. And your reward is that now you get to full mute your whole team, because Diamond will test your mental strength to the limit. So what does an Alistair have to do to climb out of Diamond? In my opinion, it's simple to understand, but it's hard to master. You need to start dominating the first 15 minutes, generally by roaming. If you rely on winning lane only, this is where you'll get your wake up call. Start learning how to use big waves bot lane and turn them into top ganks or deep vision for a future invade in the enemy jungle. And especially important is your self-control. In these elos, any mistakes you make will most likely start getting punished by somewhat competent players, so remove all these unnecessary deaths, especially while warding or ganking lanes when you have no vision of the enemy jungler, or when Shen has ulti and TP up. Start thinking about the game in terms of waves, things like 30 second timers for your waves. What can you get before the next 30 seconds? How can you punish the enemies and then get a recall before the next minion wave arrives? This is it. This is usually the end of the road for a normal player. You've done it. You have hit the big leagues. You are now in the top 1% of players on your server and the little kitties in school whisper your name as you walk past them because you're a giga chat high elo player. Of course I've taken the piss. What actually happens is you probably locked yourself in a room for god knows how long with only energy drinks to keep you company. And the last time you stepped outside was for that one mandatory lecture at the beginning of semester. In reality, this is where the true league ranked grind begins. Now you need to decide on how much time you can invest into Alistair to make it further. From here onwards, your mistakes get punished much, much harder. You can't get away with picking Alistair 
into a bad matchup without sacrificing a little bit of CS early and having the roam to pick up the slack. You need to play mind games with your opponent because Ali is a very simple champion with very few combos. So actually landing combos on a good player becomes a cat and mouse game of positioning and baiting out cooldowns. Things like going in and trying to range bait for a Lucian dash or using your W on an Ezreal but saving your Q for when he blinks away. These are what separate the mediocre Alistairs from the great. And finally, you need to snowball. This is the elo where you will see the most disgusting levels of meta whoring and flavoring of the month. Flavor of the monthing. Whatever. People will be hopping on every single broken champion trend you can imagine and enchanters will be everywhere. So many enchanters. If you want to climb past this point, it will take a lot of games, a lot of willpower and winning the game before the enemy Yumi decides to attach to her stupid jungle cane. If you keep doing that, snowball, 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 you'll get there. But just remember, mistakes are not allowed. As you step outside for the first time in what feels like years, a ray of sunlight hits your skin and you feel it burning. You understand you can't be in this environment for long, so you sprint between the shadows of nearby trees to get to the local store and to stock up on more energy drinks. You check your phone to see that several random people have added you on Twitter. Obviously your league client is maxed out on friend requests. 80% of these people are random bronze players asking in broken English if you'll boost them. The other 20% are random Turkish teams trying to recruit you, also in broken English. You slink back into your seat and queue up. You are in a flow state during the game. You are counting every minion missed by your AD carry and will use that in future games to flame him. You hear the sound of your long distance girlfriend in Discord. You have her at 10% volume because ELO is more important. While you are doing anything, you've simultaneously calculated where every minion wave will be in five minutes and have planned out a route to steal one small Krug from the enemy jungler so he doesn't hit six for the second Drake fight that will happen then. It's all going to plan. As you smile and start thinking about how much money you'll make once you get into the LEC, something happens on your screen. You've died. Standing over your corpse is a pro player. He's streaming, blinded by rage at how he could have beaten you. You visit his stream, only to find him shouting loudly in Polish about how he should have taxed the cannon minion from his laner, while he reads his donations and eats a donut with his other hand. Only now is it clear how big the skill gap truly is. Now the grind really begins.